Hello, Gene Schwimmer here. Welcome to the vlog. If you've been following the vlog, then you know that two days ago I discussed the subject transgender restrooms, public restrooms, the idea of people who identify as a sex other than their biological sex using the public restrooms of the sex with which they identify instead of the biological sex that they are. I also talked about sports and actually this will be my opportunity to talk more about sports because I really just focused on the restroom issue in the last vlog. If you didn't see that vlog you might want to stop this video and go back and watch that one. The reason I'm getting back to the subject today is because yesterday I received a comment about that vlog from uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this right Autumn Erlin. Uh, if that's wrong, forgive me. Well, I'm sure I got the autumn part right, but the Erlin, I'm not 100% sure. Anyways, I'm going to respond to what you said, but before I do, I just wanted to, number one, thank you for taking time to post a comment, but number two, just for everybody to let them know that the comment that you made, regardless of the subject, this is exactly the kind of comment that I would like to get. I had to block somebody who sent a comment that I found. Actually, it wasn't the comment so much as the way they named themselves in the, the comment, their username or whatever. It was so offensive to me that I had to delete it and block the person who wrote it. I would say to that person, if you want to come back, just change your name to something that is more polite and respectful. Which is why I want to compliment Autumn on her comment and why I want to just talk about it just a little bit because she was very respectful. She disagreed with me and she told me I was wrong or not necessarily, well in a way she told me I was wrong, but she asked a question that countered my argument. I appreciate that because it was respectful. It was about an issue. For instance, if you're talking about, say, Hillary Clinton's emails, you could argue why she should have been indicted, why she should not have been indicted. But just saying lock her up, that's not an argument. That's just a rant. And I really don't, I can't stop somebody from ranting, but I probably won't respond to something like that. And if it's really, really racist or insulting, then I'll just delete it if I could find it. I mean, right now I don't get so many comments that it's that hard to police them. So thanks a lot, Autumn. Now to your specific comment, in that video two days ago, I proposed a solution to what I see is a problem of people who are a certain biological sex identifying as the opposite sex and wanting to use the restroom of the sex with which they identify instead of the sex that they biologically are and participating in sports other than the sex that they biologically are. It's not so much a problem if you're say a biological woman wanting to compete in a powerlifting competition, let's say against men, I don't expect that to happen too much, but the other way around, you have men, well, in that previous video, I showed a headline of a track meet where the first and second place winners of a female track meet were two transgender males. My point was if a biological male can enter a female athletic competition, then what reason is there for a biological female to enter? Maybe just for the joy of running or throwing or tennis or whatever it is. It's, um, I mean, could you imagine a biological male competing in the female tennis division. In fact, now that I think of it, I remember former tennis champion John McEnroe catching a lot of flack for characterizing one of the Williams sisters. I forget whether it was Venus or Serena, but characterizing that woman's tennis champion as being one of the or maybe the best female tennis player. He got a lot of flack. The person interviewing him asked, I probably a woman, I don't remember who interviewed him, but asked, 
why the best, why the qualification, why best female tennis player, why not just one of the best tennis players? I think that's what the conversation was, as I recall. And John McEnroe responded that he was perfectly correct with his characterization because Venus or Serena Williams, I forget which one, they may be ranked number one among women's tennis players, but among male tennis players, they would be ranked something like number 500, something like that. Now, I'm not getting into that controversy except to mention that could you imagine the number one male tennis player identifying as a woman and competing in the uh, women's division. There would be no contest. So if you're a woman, then why even bother to enter or compete? So I'm going to get into this a little bit more later, but just let me read Autumn's comment because this is the issue that she raised after reading my video. And she said, what if a natal, which I guess she means a biological female, she says natal, I say biological. Uh, what if a natal female transitioned a number of years ago with testosterone and had a beard as thick as yours? And I wonder if this was before I shaved my beard a few days ago. It was bigger because I don't shave it as often as I should. But okay, as big as mine, even this qualifies, I guess. Wouldn't it be a bit of an issue with that female to male person using the ladies room? Female patrons are not going to know what is going on as facial shape will change immensely under testosterone. Autumn raises a valid point. I didn't really think of that. It caused me to rethink my argument, whether it was correct. And now I want to respond. So to respond, I have to talk about the Eurovision Song Contest. I assume most people know what it is, but for those who don't know what it is because the United States doesn't enter, which is a good thing in my opinion, because if you've ever heard the songs, they are pretty awful. That's just my personal opinion. Anyway, Eurovision, as you can imagine, it's Euro. And oh, but an exception is ABBA. The year ABBA won with Waterloo. That's what launched her career, winning the Eurovision contest. I love ABBA, but most of the songs I've heard since then are not quite up to that level. Let's just leave it at that. But the Eurovision Song Contest is, it's like the world soccer match, but it's for music. Every country chooses a contestant, an entrant, to enter with a song that they wrote or, they're, or that they're performing. And somebody, I don't know who the heck it is, votes for the winner and that winner wins the Eurovision Song Contest. Now why am I going on about the Eurovision Song Contest? Because I want to introduce you to the winner of the 2014 Eurovision Song Contest. Here she is, or well, you can see. Here she is, or here he is. And that lucky winner's name, from Austria, by the way, Conchita Burst. But here's my point that I want to raise with Autumn, which is, as you can see, this is a biological male in a dress with a beard, which is what Autumn was using for her example. Somebody who has a beard like mine and uses the ladies' restroom, would that not disconcert the ladies' the biological ladies in the ladies' room. Well, here you have a biological male in a dress, but with a beard. So if we reject my solution and we go to transgender restrooms, then you can see the issue, Autumn, that Conchita Verst, this bearded biological male who identifies as a female, would be able to use the ladies' room. So that doesn't solve your problem. I and mean, actually, it's a kind of a double whammy, I suppose, because if Conchita, well, I haven't been, I guess people are running into this problem wherever she goes in a public place when she needs to use the restroom, but it would probably discomfort a lot of men, biological men, if Conchita uses the men's restroom. So no law is perfect. You're not going to solve every problem but you can see that it's a problem either way autumn that doesn't really answer your concern but it does raise another issue because that's what the matter is it's not how the transgender person the person identifying as a sex other than their biological sex is going to 
feel having to use their biological sex restroom. It's how the people in the bathroom of the sex with which this transgender person identifies, how they are going to feel knowing they are in the room with such a person. So let's get back to Autumn's comment and let's talk about a biological woman who has a beard like mine and uses the men's bathroom. We're not talking about a police state where we're going to have people stationed outside of public restrooms with DNA kits taking cotton swabs, saliva swabs of everybody who wants to use a restroom to count their chromosomes and see if they're male or female. So if somebody has had testosterone treatments and has a beard like mine, then if they can get away with it, if they can pass as men, if somebody has so successfully transitioned from biological female to looking like a biological male to the point where this person can go into a male restroom and not be detected as being a biological female, then there's no problem because the men don't know. They don't know that this man is actually a woman, so there's no problem. And the other way around, if a biological male has hormone treatments and cosmetic surgery, et cetera, et cetera, and does so so successfully that this person can go into the woman's room, the ladies' room, and not be detected by the other biological women in the room, then there's no problem because they don't know. And what you don't know, as I say, can't hurt you. I mean, in life, sometimes what you don't know can hurt you. But in this case, what you don't know can't hurt you. So as I said, no law is perfect, and that's okay. You can use my suggestion and label the restroom doors XX for uh, females and Y. Well, now let's stick with yesterday's, okay? So XY was this way. This is the XY men's restroom, XY, X chromosome, Y chromosome. This is the XX room, XX on the door for the ladies room. But you can violate my proposed law if you can get away with it. That's basically it. But if somebody knows that you're not the sex that you're claiming to be, then you have to leave. Then you can't go in there. It's that simple. And just get better cosmetic surgery, put on better makeup, uh, get a longer beard. I, I don't know. But you see, that's what I'm talking about. If you can get away with violating a law in a way that nobody is hurt and nobody is offended, then to me, it's no harm, no foul. But that's bathrooms. Now, sports is something else entirely. Then I do want somebody with DNA kits testing people for the reasons that I mentioned. In fact, we have in the Olympics today, contestants are tested for drugs and for hormones, and I would agree with also testing in the future for DNA, for being one biological sex or the other, because sports, you're talking about a situation where somebody is hurt, even if, let's say, you're a female, biological female, in a biological female track meet, and then you have a female identifying contestant, a biological male competing with you, even if that contestant, the transgendered contestant can pass undetected, it's unfair in the contest because that person's going to be physically stronger, probably physically faster, probably. And as I showed with the track meet is going to win. So in the matter of public restrooms, it's no harm, no foul. But in the matter of sports, I do see a harm, I do see a foul, and that's just in the contest. Let's talk also about gyms, about the locker rooms. If your transition is so successful that you had your penis removed and you look like a female, then maybe you can get away with it. But if we're talking about female identifying biological males with penises sharing a shower with women, 
I have to think that there are some women that are not going to be happy with that. And if we're talking about adolescents and young teenagers, I think there are a lot of parents that are not going to be happy with it. That's my uh, word on the subject for today. Hopefully tomorrow I'll be on to another subject. But as with Autumn, your comments are welcome. What I would really like to see is somebody else respond to Autumn and then Autumn respond and get a discussion going. As I said in one of my earlier videos, you heard what I think. I really want to hear what you think. But you should also be willing to hear what each other thinks. So that's it for today. Thanks a lot. As usual, thumbs up if you like the video. Share it with anybody you think could benefit from it or share the whole channel. If you have any comments, like Autumn, you can put it in the comments below. You can suggest a subject in the comments below. If you have a Twitter feed, then why not tweet the URL to this video? Oh, and then the one from two days ago, so people will know what the whole context is. But why not the whole channel? And finally, subscribe. And then if you subscribe, you'll always know when another video has been posted as soon as it's been posted. And then you can get right in there and see what all the action is and join the action maybe in the comment section. That's it. Uh, nice to see you. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon. Bye.